Yo, what's happening? It's Mikey. If you are interested in making a podcast, I cannot recommend Spotify for Podcasters enough. Dude, it is so freaking easy. Seriously, Spotify for Podcasters lets you create and then distribute your podcast, and you can even earn money from it, man. And you don't need any fancy equipment. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can just start creating today. And you can do video podcasts, too, like I do. Just download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today yo and welcome to the one and only award-winning mikey podcast this show is a wild ride through the news true crime real life stories conspiracies and so much more if you are new to this show welcome i appreciate you showing up and checking it out happy new year everybody this is the first show of 2024 and 2024 has come in with a bang there's been hella interesting news so far this year we've got new year's earthquakes in japan california washington dc and New York City. We've had apocalyptic waves here in California on the coastline over the past weekend. Plus, we got some Jeffrey Epstein updates. John Doe number 36 has been officially identified. And what the fuck is up with the weird art that was found in that dude's home? I've talked about this before, but we're going to touch on it again because I think it's important to bring it back up. I'm talking about Bill Clinton in a dress, George Bush knocking down Jenga towers with paper airplanes, and a bunch of prosthetic eyeballs. This stuff is weird, but we're going to get into all of that. We're going to dive into everything in today's episode of the Mikey Podcast. All sites, please stand by Channel 1. Communication, switching to Channel 1. All right, here it comes. Be ready. Switch controls to manual override. Awaiting confirmation on the video page. Countdown is running at 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The Mikey Podcast. All right. Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Again, before I get into the show, some stuff I want to talk about, just like normal, like I do on every other show, uh, just some things to get out of the way. Lots of new stuff coming this year uh, from the the Mikey podcast and Muscatello Media and a few other things. I'm, oh, my gosh. I've, I like I, it's so many, so many things I want to tell you right now, um, but I can't. And something really big that I'm working on with a with one of the recording studios here in town. So if you are a local musician or band, and you want to jump in on this? I got a deal for you. I'll just, I'm not going to tell you the name of it or what exactly we're going to do. But if this sounds interesting to you, hit me up. The links will be below in the description, uh, just like at every podcast of the Mikey Podcast. The best ways to get a hold of me is through social media and stuff like that. So I'm working on something new again. Just going to give you some quick details so you know. Uh, this will be a video series podcast. It will be available to everybody. It'll be available at MikeyPodcast.com and, uh, and, and all the platforms like usual. Um, this is going to be a music podcast. So what we're working on uh, is working with bands, local and some national at some point, um, and getting them into the recording studio. Uh, a guy I know that owns a recording studio here in San Francisco, beautiful studio too. Oh my God, I went down there a week last week. Gorgeous. And it's all brand new. And it's, it's just the, the setup there is incredible and I can't wait to show you guys and I can't wait to get this thing rolling. But we're tr what we're going to do is we're going to bring bands in uh, and it's sort of going to be, you know, come in, play a couple of songs. We'll record the music. You get the bands, give access to the recording. So you can want some studio time. Now, this will be live recording. So it's not going to be like, you know, let's do another take. Let's do another take type of thing. Um, but, you know, they're recordings in a professional, beautiful professional studio with a professional engineer. And, uh, and we'll do a podcast. So basically, you'll come in, you'll play three songs, and we'll record those three songs, and then we'll hear your story. We'll talk about what you do, who you are, where the band came from, and the story behind the band. So it's not really behind the music type thing, but I guess kind of uh, is a sort of a take off that. But this is this thing we used to do back in the day in the radio when I was on the radio where uh, groups would come in to this little studio that we had at this radio station I worked at. We'd even bring listeners in and we'd hang out and it'd be almost like an acoustic session where the bands would come in and play acoustic and, you know, there'd be an interview portion or whatever. But I don't, this doesn't necessarily need to be acoustic. And if it works out for my listeners here, um, especially sub club members, you guys are going to get access to this, meaning you guys are going to be able to be a part of this and come to these events and come hang out with the bands, enjoy some free live music, hang out in the studio and be a part of this whole podcast. So this is coming soon very very soon if you if this is something that sounds interesting to you this is something that you you're in a band or or you're even just a solo artist and this is something you think would be great so this i'm talking about some free studio time free media it costs you nothing but 
your time. There's no real catch here. You know what I mean? Like the catch is you got to play the songs and you got to hang out. So that's it. Or if you, so if you, or you know, somebody that might be interested in this, send them my way, let me know. And we'll get this thing rolling. This is going to be starting here in just a few weeks. I cannot wait to get it done. It was going to be pro- fully produced up. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be, I told you new things coming in 2024. And this is one of those things that I'm very excited about it. I, again, I'm not going to give you the name and stuff, but it's coming soon. So stick around for that. That'll be dope. Uh, happy new year. If I haven't said that already, again, lots of new things, new podcast stuff coming in the works. Um, new segments that I'm working on for this year too. Like I mentioned, I believe on my last freeloader Friday live, we'll be doing probably, uh, I was probably starting in February one freeloader live a month will be hopefully on location. And if it can't be on location, that's fine. We'll do it virtually, but I will be bringing in a guest, meaning you listeners get to hang out and be a part of the podcast, whether it's, you know, you just want to hang out and watch, see how things go. You want to be on the show, want us to interview, whatever it is. It's that's how it's going to be. And we'll get into that as we get a little bit closer, but that's cool too. Also some events coming up in 2024. And of course, giveaways and all kinds of cool stuff. We'll be revamping the pod shop at MikeyPodcast.com. That's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to pull out some of those items and take control here. Uh, this quality control because some of the stuff that, that it, it takes a little bit longer to get shipped. Shipping prices were outrageous. Some of the prices in themselves were outrageous because I was using a third party service, but I'm taking control and bringing it all in house. I told you I was going to do that over time and that's going to happen. Uh, in the next few weeks here too. Um, so we'll be limiting some of the stuff that we're selling, but it'll be quality control stuff. So you'll have gr- so the t-shirts and the ha- we'll have t-shirts, we'll have hats, we'll have cups, we'll have tumblers. Um, and I think that's probably good for now. Uh, so we'll have all that stuff and that'll be available. It, it's all still, you can go to MikeyPodcast.com right now, jump into the pod shop and you can still order stuff. Stuff is still available because I haven't shut the, sh- the, the shop down yet to revamp it, but that's going to be happening. Uh, so if you want to get any of those items, go for it. I might leave some of the weird items up there that from the third party service, like the little speaker, uh, and a couple other things, you know, just in case people want to get it. Uh, but we're going to just bring most of the stuff in house because I think it's important to have good quality stuff, less, not expensive shipping, just being able for us, for us to be able to control it, I think is going to be the best way to go. That way we just, you know, it's all right here and it's not relying on anybody else or any third party service to do anything for me. Cause that's, that stuff sucks. Uh, but again, just a quick reminder, I can't do any of this stuff without you joining the sub club. So if you are a freeloader right now, head over to MikeyPodcast.com or Spotify, join the sub club. Uh, it's less than 10 cents a day. Your support is what brings all this together. And right now, you're, I'm going to be honest with you. This, I'm doing all this still really on my own. The support that I have right now for sub club members basically just pays for the website and the hosting of the podcast. So there's no profit coming in here. Nobody's making any money off this. I'm doing this for free. And as a matter of fact, it's costing me money. So if you want to help support it, great. I appreciate it. That would be awesome. You know, I mean, you're supporting independent media because corporate media is co- crap and you're supporting independent content creation, uh, which is me, which means it's real and not spoon fed corporate bullshit written by some dude in an office. That doesn't know anything. It's just real life stuff. So if you feel like you're into that and you want to support that, head over to monkeypodcast.com. Uh, or Spotify, because you can subscribe on Spotify as well and join the sub club. But I recommend MikeyPodcast.com because you get access to all the videos. Uh, you get access to past episodes. By the way, if you haven't been over and logged into your sub club account in a while, now's a good time. I uploaded a good amount of of new old stuff. So I was going back and realized that there's still some, some I'm still, it's like, you got to remember, it is just me here. So it takes time. And I do have a regular job because some of you freeloaders haven't decided to pull, pull you know, pull the trigger and, and join the sub club. So it's really hard for me to get everything done that I need to get done. Uh, but I went through and I noticed I was missing a lot of stuff from the very first season of the Mikey podcast, the very first few episodes. So if you head in there now, the sub club of Mikey podcast.com, they're there. Some of them are audio only because that's what I was doing at first, but there are some videos as well. And I'll keep uploading them so that you can get access, but just go there and you know, log into your sub club account and go into the archive of the past episodes of the Mikey podcast. And you get caught up if you want to. Some of that stuff is kind of relevant to today when I talk about uh, Gis- Ghislaine, Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein, which we're going to get into here in just a couple of minutes on this episode. So that's that's stuff from a few years ago that, again, relates to things that are happening today. So log in and check that stuff out or just join the sub club at MikeyPodcast.com and help support independent media. Ladies and gentlemen, I haven't played this in a while, so I'm thinking, what the hell? Let's do this 
I don't know. I don't even remember what this thing sounds like. Let's listen to it. It's Wednesday, hump day. It's the middle of the week. You're overworked and underpaid, and your boss is a dick. Well, your boss is a dick. Well, maybe your boss isn't a dick. Maybe your boss is a bitch. Maybe you're the boss and you're the dick bitch. Don't be a dick. Let's get right into it, man. There's been some earthquakes. I don't know if you noticed or have been paying attention to the news. What a wild year we've had so far. It's only the third day, at least for sub club members, freeloaders. You're getting this on the fourth day. That's why you got to join a sub club. Anyway, uh, let's see. We had a powerful earthquake hit Western Japan, leaving at least 55 people dead and thousands of buildings damaged. Officials are on edge right now, warning that more quakes could be in store and aftershocks continue their relentless tour of the area. Damage is quite extensive, by the way. Tens of thousands of homes have been destroyed. I'm going to show you some of these pictures here. It's just, I mean, it's just sad. We look at this whole house is completely collapsed. The houses around it are collapsed. There's a bunch of trash on the ground. I can't even, it's, I can't even imagine what these people are going through. The government, of course, is playing some number games, giving us some, a slightly lower death toll than what the media is saying. But like I said, it's about 55, at least at my last check, or at least when I, when I was writing this episode. Shipping can make or break a sale, so optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right. New music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. 55 people have passed away, uh, but again, they're giving us a lower death toll because, you know, who's got time for accuracy? I guess I'm not, I'm not sure what, the, why I don't really know why they would do that. What their problem is. It doesn't make much sense to me, but whatever, uh, water, uh, power, f- cell phone service. They're out in some areas of Japan. So it's really kind of hard to get an accurate depiction of the chaos they're experiencing right now. Uh, but Toshitaka, Toshitakata, Toshitakata, Katata, Katata. This is somebody's name, by the way, I'm trying to say right now. Toshida Katatata, the disaster professor. The disaster professor? They only have one disaster professor in Japan? Is that also like a, is that like a government position? You the the, the, disaster professor. That's what you are now. Whatever. Anyway, this guy uh, reassures us that supposedly they got it under control. But I mean, looking at these pictures, it don't really look like things. This almost looks like the, the, the 2011 earthquake was that what year it was this place is destroyed man some of these because some of these uh these aerial shots that have been coming in look at this if you're a sub club member you can see this right now this is like it's leveled that's not good it looks it's post-apocalyptic man you know landslides we got this tossed boats in some of these pictures uh fires there, there was a whole fire that destroyed almost a complete city uh look at this one this is another one i know so i'm sorry freeloaders you can't see it but again join the sub club japan's military sent in about a thousand people to to join the rescue efforts and the prime minister Fumia Kushida. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. So I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't even care if I'm saying it right or not. Uh, but he had, did say to declare he declared that saving lives is the priority, and that's what they're trying to do. They're on they're in a battle against time because if you're how long are you gonna last if you're buried under a freaking you know you're looking at this, look at this this whole street is destroyed. If you imagine you're buried under one of these houses, not good, not. Good. And just as things were starting to feel a little safe and they were starting to clean up and get the, the efforts underway, another earthquake hit a 5.6 magnitude. So I don't know if you want to call that an aftershock or what. I'm not sure what the difference between aftershock and an actual earthquake is. I feel like if there's a big earthquake and anything smaller is an aftershock. I'm not sure. But quakes are rocking the area like a freaking seismic dance party. Reaching over 100 aftershocks so far. As of the time of me writing this podcast, it's probably more by now. And clearly nature didn't get the memo about, you know, toning it down a little bit. Jesus Christ, man, these people are struggling over there. They don't need any more. Thankfully, though, the nuclear power plants are safe or normal, I guess. And the uh, tsunami warnings have been canceled. You know, by the way, what the fuck? 
Why can somebody please, for the love of God, tell me why is tsunami spelled with a T? Nobody says to 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 tsunami. Why do we have silent letters? I don't I don't understand that. Like knight. Knight, for instance, because clearly adding a silent K is the key to becoming a legendary warrior. Get the hell out of here. And don't even get me started on psychic. I guess predicting the future can't can't be done without a freaking silent P. And then there's gnome. Gnome. Why would a mythical t creature need a silent G? This, I don't understand silent letters. This is it's almost like the English language is like, hey, let's make things interesting and toss in a few silent letters for shits and giggles. No reason at all. Sorry, I don't know why I went off on that. I just hate silent letters. It doesn't make much sense to me. It's stupid. <laughs> uh, anyway, had California had a new, also had a New Year's Day earthquake. But yeah, these there's the earth, like New Year's coming in, 2024, boom, earthquake, boom, earthquake. California's earthquake was a 4.1. Not a whole lot of damage, but it is, it's kind of weird that it happened the same day as the big one in Japan. Seems a bit odd to me, even though experts are saying that they're unrelated. Okay, sure, but you know, I have no idea. I'm just, it doesn't seem like they'd be unrelated. If a big ass earthquake happened in Japan and then literally right across the ocean, another earthquake happened within a few hours of each other. Does it not seem like a coincidence? I mean, what do I know though? I'm just an inquisitive podcaster who likes to ask questions about things. Now, before we get into the East Coast earthquakes, which is what I want to talk about next, Washington, D.C. and uh, New York City, which is very surprising, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Over the weekend here in California, though, I want to show you this video. I'm sure some of you saw this, but in case you didn't, it was the end of the world. It was the apocalypse on the coast with these waves coming in. I'm going to play a video for you. Uh, I don't want the, the freaking sound to be too loud. So I'm just going to play this video so you can check, check this out. Watch as this wave rolls in and just look, they see it come. Boom. I, it's these people are booking it for their lives running as fast as they can. So a lot of these people got swiped up under the water. This car is even getting pushed away. Multiple cars get pushed are getting pushed down this street. This was like almost flooded an entire neighborhood. And uh, this is just one of the many videos that were online of these waves crashing in on the coast on the same right, right before not the same day as the earthquakes, but a couple of days before. It's just it just seems like 2024, like, I don't know, man, if this is a sign of what's going to happen in 2024, I am not looking forward to it. I have been telling you for years that 2024 is going to be a crazy year. And I say for years, I started talking about this in 2022. And when, and my point of talking about it in 2022 is because my contract was up at the radio station. I was like, oh, when I was on the radio, I was like, yeah, 2020, 2024 is going to be a big year, blah, blah, blah. It's all this crazy, stupid shit. Because me and my co my co host at the time were like, we're not going to resign this bullshit ass contract. You're going to pay, whatever. And then they fired us. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, but anyways, but I, I'm just saying, I started talking about this in 2022, that 2024 is going to be a wild year, but I'm really beginning to believe it. And if this is, this is just the beginning, I'm not looking forward to it, but this is another wild weekend right here in California, right before the new year. Uh, also, there was, it's just crazy to me that these waves came in, you know, the, a couple of days before the earthquake, same day as a full moon. Uh, same day that the, the sun had a, what is it? Coronial mass e ejaculation or I don't even, I don't know how to say it. Coronal mass ej ejaculation ejection. It sounds dirty, whatever it is, but the sun is spitting shit out at us and it was happening over the weekend and it, it right around the full moon. So some, some people are saying that all this is connected, you know, the, the, they're saying we're supposed to get some power outages and stuff. So if your power happens to go out in the next couple of days, you just blame the sun, I suppose, or blame the fact that Jeffrey Epstein's list is supposed to come out and the government's like, we need to shut this shit down, but we'll talk about that later. Coronial mass eject ejection, ejaculation, whatever. Okay. To the East coast, we had an earthquake in Washington, DC. Uh, I believe that was on the, that was on new year's day, 2.3 that earthquake. So we had the Japan earthquake, the California earthquake and a Washington DC earthquake. Now there wasn't a whole lot, there wasn't any damage or anything like that, but some people said that they felt some shaking, but that was pretty much it. But then later on that same night, we had an over to New York city where, where they also had an earthquake, a weird one though. Okay, because at first it was reported that this that this was a small these that it wasn't it wasn't an earthquake. It was from, this is a scene. 
This is a scene in New York. Sorry, I'm trying to just turn his volume. There we go. Uh, this is a scene in New York City Monday night uh, of a manhole explosion. So there basically it was being reported that there was small explosions from manholes around Roosevelt or Roosevelt Island. Now, again, if you're a sub club member, you can see this. This is a helicopter video of ton. I'm talking dozens of, I can't even, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five fire trucks right there. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look, it's like 13. Look, it's like probably 15, 20 fire trucks, ambulance, police cars, everything. And they're all surrounding these manhole covers that were supposedly going off. Then now, I don't know if this was actually happening or not, because then there was reports of explosions in buildings shaking on the island. So just get these manhole uh, covers blowing off, explosions, buildings shaking, all kinds of stuff. Now, it's, it's really important to remember the building shaking thing, because think about that. If people were feeling buildings shaking, it would have had to have been at least a 3.0. You know what I mean? It had to have been. And on top of that, there were there was also power outages in several buildings, and it was even being reported that uh, firefighters were dealing with multiple manhole explosions, not just one. It was multiple manhole explosions, and then so it was like it was happening online. It was like news after news after news, and then do nothing. You know, then it was like done. No, nothing else was happening. I'm like, okay, right, that's super odd that that was going down. But all right, so that's what's going on. The firefighters were investigating the explosions and Con Ed was investigating the power outages and the officials then later the next day or the, well, it happened in the middle of the night. So later the next morning, officials get on TV and they say, they state that a minor 1.7 earthquake, 1.7 magnitude earthquake is thought to have awoken residents on Roosevelt Island and in Queens. Hold on a second. A, a minor, so this is the general area. So if, you, if, you, if you're a sub club member, you can see where the island I'm talking about. It's really, it's basically just, in the, it's in Manhattan. You know what I mean? It's basically just part of the city. So, but, but let's be real here. A 1.7 magnitude earthquake would, would, would not, I don't, I don't think people would feel that. This 1.7 magnitude with a series caused a series of explosions that resulted in power outages and buildings shaking early Tuesday. This is what officials were saying. This is a 1.7 magnitude earthquake. It caused a wave of small explosions throughout the city and then resulted in power outages and shaking of the buildings. 1.7 magnitude earthquake caused that. And since when does it, and New York City doesn't really get earthquakes. I mean, I guess they kind of do, but they don't really get earthquakes at all. And I think the most, at least when they do that, they're not significant in any way. The most significant earthquake or recent significant earthquake was like in the 1800s. It was like a 5.2 in New York City. But seriously, a 1.7 earthquake is very unlikely to cause any damage. And this bullshit story sounds like a bad Michael Bay film. Uh, earthquake, explosions, manholes, buildings shaking, power. Get the fuck out of here. 1.7 isn't even usually felt by people let alone strong enough to cause explosions, shake buildings, and wake people up. I just don't believe this. Now, I'm not saying it's not possible. It really could have just been a series of events, like a small earthquake triggers a power station explosion, chain reaction happens over the, and other small power stations explode, causing manholes to explode, shaking buildings, waking people up. Sure, why not? Maybe. It sounds extremely unlikely, but honestly, that's the only possible explanation. Unless there's something going on under New York City. Under Manhattan. And there we know that there's hella, hella caves and tunnels under New York City. Everybody knows this. Out uh, subway stations that aren't running anymore, just all kinds of weird shit going on under the city there. And 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 honestly, if you've been paying attention to some of the news lately, rumor ha rumors have it that elites have been building underground bunkers all around the world. I don't know why, but it seemed like just last year there was an uptick and like Mark Zuckerberg and a few other people just, you know, it was reported that they were building bunkers and these bunkers are supposed to be done. I think what I saw, like at least some of the reports, like they're supposed to be done sometime in 2024. The, the goal is to get them done before the winter of 2024. I, why do these people need bunkers? What do they know? Are they really building bunkers? I have no idea. During my coffee, not in a Mikey podcast coffee mug today because it's dirty. But I will uh, 
tomorrow's coffee or Friday's coffee. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, coffee does taste better than the Mikey Podcast coffee mug at MikeyPodcast.com. You can get those. All right, where was I? All right, so anyway, I'm just throwing out wild ideas here. Look, where maybe they're building bunkers under the city. I don't know what's going on. These are all just crazy ideas that I throw out just for fun. Oh, yeah, speaking of fun, actually, I'm just kidding. This isn't going to be fun at all. It has been confirmed that Bill Clinton, this creepy-looking motherfucker right here, went to Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile island multiple times, and he is John Doe number 36, ladies and gentlemen. Here he is, right here. This is actually a good picture of this asshole because he looks like shit right now. Bill Clinton was mentioned more than 50 times in redacted files related to Jeffrey Epstein, according to ABC News. These documents include court filings from the from 2015, from the case in 2015 that involved the names of additional Epstein associates, alleged perpetrators, alleged co-conspirators, alleged victims, witnesses, and former Epstein employees. These files were part of a legal battle between Virginia Guffrey, which I've talked about in past episodes of the Mikey podcast. If you're a sub club member, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, you can go back and watch or listen to some of the early episodes of the Mikey podcast at MikeyPodcast.com or even on Spotify. If you're a sub club member, go all the way back to the beginning and caught, get caught up on the details of Virginia Guffrey, Jeffrey Epstein, and Ghislaine Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell. How the fuck you say Jizz? I like to call her Jizz. I know it's kind of weird talking about Ghislaine Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell and calling her Jizz because of all the weird shit that went on with Jeffrey Epstein. But you know what? Let's call her Jizz. Why not? What else are we going to call her? I'm not going to call her by her real name. She's a piece of shit. Jizz. <sighs> anyway, so th this goes all the way back to that particular case in Bill Clinton kind of being involved in that shit while the specific content of each mention with Bill Clinton has not really been disclosed. The fact that Bill Clinton's name appears so frequently in these redacted documents has really way raised some questions about his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. However, it is important to note that Clinton has denied any illicit connections to Epstein, just like they all do. Every single one of them denies it until they're caught and they will continue to deny it. So it, it is interesting to see, you know, how they're going to spin this list that's going to be coming out with Jeffrey Epstein. For those of you that don't know, there will be a list that comes out. I believe it's supposed to come out. It could be today, tomorrow. It could be any day now. This list is going to drop. And when it does, we'll talk about it on the Mikey podcast. Um, and we'll compare it with the other list that I have, which is, uh, why did I put that? On? I don't know if I have it in here. Let's see if I have that on here real quick. Cause I want to bring it up. If I do this list, I told you guys about it the other day and said that I'm going to see if I can find it because I had it. I know you can't really see much on here, but if if you are and you can get close to it, I'm trying to find where I put it. Eh, it doesn't matter where it's at. Uh, but it, that, that's that's this list that's on the screen right now is the list that came out a few years ago when all when it really was going down with Jeffrey Epstein. Um, when he got arrested and people were trying to figure out who was who these are these this is the list of the names that were on Jeffrey Epstein's flight logs. So whether they did anything gross or illicit, I have no idea, but you got like Miley Cyrus on there, Bill Clinton on there, Cher is on there, uh, Chris Tucker is on there, Chrissy Teigen, of course, we all know how much she loves the babies. She's definitely on there. Um, who else is on there? Let's see. We got, uh, I, I think Jimmy Kimmel might be on there. Um, Rob Reiner, of course, he's on there. You ever follow that guy? You ever look at that guy's Twitter? That guy is the biggest Joe Biden pusher I've ever seen in my life. It's It's almost disgusting how much he's in love with Joe Biden. But anyway, uh, we got it. We're going to compare. What I'm trying to say is I'm going to compare that list to the, to the confirmed list that's going to be released by the courts here. And we'll see, we'll try to find some correlation once that comes out. But since we're talking about this, I think now is a really good time to bring up some of the really interesting, weird art that was found at Jeffrey Epstein's residences. Like, for example, this particular picture of Bill Clinton in a blue dress. Besides this picture being just creepy as fuck as it is, it's actually weirdly titled John Doe 36, who I just told you has been confirmed to be Bill Clinton. This is not, I'm not just making this up. This is a fact. You, you'll find this out in the next couple of days if you haven't already heard about it. It's been all over the news, but Bill Clinton is John Doe 36. Uh, so that is confirmed. This really, this, this painting, this is a real painting, by the way, was found in Jeffrey Epstein's home. Blue dress, red heels. Why? What is this all about? 
It's the, the, by the way, the blue dress, same color as the, the infamous dress with Monica Lewinsky and his baby batter on it. So what are you trying to say here? What's going on? What is this? What does this mean? Huh? It's this, look at this. I just like, if you can, I kind of wish you could see it. Look at this fucking picture. He's pointing at this is the creepiest thing ever. I don't even want to look at this shit. That's weird. The hell's he even doing? But that's not the only weird piece of art because then there's this freaking thing. What are we looking at right here? I'll have to explain it so the freeloaders can see it. This is George Bush sitting on the ground, okay, playing with a couple of paper airplanes with a couple of buildings knocked over, Jenga buildings knocked over. And this particular painting is titled War Games. As painted by some Australian American artist, uh, it depicts a scene where George Bush is sitting on the floor, like I said, of the White House, playing with paper airplanes in front of two fallen Jenga towers, which many believe is reference to the 9-11 attacks. Now, I was trying to find out this could there's the picture. I'm gonna take it off the screen. I was trying to find out when this um when this painting was made, but it's not really clearly there's no there's no way to find out when it was painted, but it was first reported on in 2012. Uh, and again, this painting gained notoriety when it was discovered at Epstein's New York mansion after his death in 2019, along with that blue one or the one with Bill Clinton. The reason for Jeffrey Epstein, the reason he had this painting is really a mystery. Nobody really knows. Some believe it was a, a sort of a subtle jab at the former president, uh, while others think it may have just been a conversation piece to spark discussions among his guests. Who knows? The true motive behind it, we'll, well, we'll never really know. Well, maybe we will. I'm not sure, but chances of that are not but anyway if that's not weird enough for you i don't have a picture of this next one but i have to tell you about this epstein had a row a row of framed prosthetic eyeballs okay this is according to sources who who were have been in his house and 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 uh police who collected evidence and stuff and they were said to be imported from england and they were there to remind visitors supposedly that they were being watched at all times. Now, some believe this was a subtle form of, of intimidation, while others see it as a conversation piece, as most art, uh, just to spark up conversations among guests. Whatever the true motive, again, is another one of those things that we never really will know. But it is essential to note that the significance of the prosthetic eyeballs may be more symbolic than anything else. Uh, it's just, I honestly believe that they're there to tell you that you're being watched. Everything you do is being recorded and watched because of the amount of evidence and things that were found in this man's home. Now there was tons and tons of, of items found in his home after he was, after he died, including thousands of videotapes that were being used to blackmail his clients. Now this, this, these tapes have never, have never been made public, obviously, but you got to wonder why. Why does the FBI have all these tapes? This is a real thing. I'm not even lying. These tapes were, as a matter of fact, uh, the story is that these tapes, when when he died and the, the FBI went to his home to raid it and get all, you know, whatever they're going to do, um, these all of these tapes and a lot of this stuff was already packaged up nicely and neatly, just put out for the FBI to get. Just so they, here, here you go. Here's everything you need. It's and it's all evidence. What is on these tapes? Uh, who who are these people that he was recording? I'm just you know I think I think the world has the right to know. Yeah, you know what? And, and there's a really good chance that I'll, if that if this information ever comes out, that you're probably going to be shocked, and you're probably going to be your world is going to get turned upside down if any of the stuff that has been going around and, and been coming out is even remotely true because it's some sick, sick shit. And it's a little terrifying, but I don't know if we'll ever see the light of day. These tapes, I have no idea. These tapes will ever see the light of day. I'm not sure. Uh, but the fact is that they, that there's a ton of evidence on these, on these tapes. And if the FBI is not moving to, uh, to get to arrest these fucking scumbags that are sleeping with children and eating babies and all that other shit, dude, you got, come on. What's going on here? You're part of the problem, FBI. We need to dismantle the FBI. Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy, by the way, the pastrami sandwich. He is, uh, he's been running around talking about how he's going to, he wants to dismantle the FBI, dismantle the IRS, dismantle the Department of Education. Well, these are all things I 100% agree with. I know people, when people hear dismantle the uh, Department of Education, why, why would we do that? We first of all, that is why do you want the government involved in your kids' education? Let's talk about that for a second. Look at how fucking stupid and useless these people are. You want them to control the education? What the fuck? That's that simple. But it's a useless government uh 
uh, program, I suppose, that <laughs> it's just a waste of tax dollars. We don't need them telling us what our kids should be learning. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Let's, the state tax dollars should go to that. But I mean, but the FBI, waste of time. IRS, get the fuck out of here. There's a bunch of bunch of shit that I like about Vivek Ramaswamy. And as we head more into 2024, again, this being an election year, it's going to be wild and there's going to be a lot to say. He could be the guy. He as of this moment in time, like if it was if there was a vote happening, yeah, I'd probably vote for him. I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, so back to Jeffrey Epstein. Maybe, maybe we'll get the list today. I have no idea. We'll compare the two lists when it does come out to the one that I just showed you a minute ago. Uh, as I told you, I'd find it. I found it. There it is. So we'll compare the two when it comes out. And I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Hopefully, we'll get those details today. But who knows? But as I said at the beginning of the show, it has been a wild week so far. And uh, and and the new <laughs> it's been a wild year so far, and it's only day three. So I have no idea how the rest of this week's going to go, but I can't wait for Freeloader Friday to talk to, talk to you guys about it. There's other things that I want to talk about, too, because apparently uh, Jimmy Kimmel wants to sue a football player. If you guys haven't heard about this, we'll get into that. Uh, I'm not going to tell you who the football player is. It's pretty funny what he's saying about Jimmy Kimmel and why and what it has to do with Jeffrey Epstein, and why he wants to sue him. <laughs> and a bunch of other stuff that I want to talk about on Freeloader Friday. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of laws in California are taking place are actually just went into effect on the first of the year. So we'll talk about those new laws that you got to look out for. And some other things. Again, that's what going to happen on Freeloader Friday right here at monkeypodcast.com on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, fa uh, YouTube. Did I sell this? X. <laughs> just repeating myself now. Uh, but hit up MikeyPodcast.com. Join the sub club for less than 10 cents a day and help support independent media. Have big things on the way in the world of podcasting and for this particular podcast and other things too that I think you as a listener of this show and as a community uh, member of the local Sacramento area, I think these are things that you're going to enjoy. And even if you're not local, you're going to enjoy the stuff that we're bringing to the table. I promise you that. So join the sub club to help support this this adventure that we're on together and you support independent media and content creation because in corporate media sucks all right join the most exclusive vip club around mikeypodcast.com happy new year everybody and i will be back on friday have a good day see ya the mikey podcast